Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian from KHUX Nation, and oh my god, we finally find oh, there's a there's a few things that they finally have done after what like three four years of the game being out. They finally have done, and I couldn't well, I, I couldn't be happier. It's probably not the best at the most truthful first. I'm happy, but I, I can I can still be, there's still more things they can do to make me happy. <laughs> Okay, but they finally have done a few things right, and I hope they continue to do this. Okay, because this is literally one of the few things I've been all I've been asking for for the longest time. Um, and I'm sure a lot of you guys might be happy to hear this as well. Okay, so the first thing is the fact that they simply just straight up told us, gave us a roadmap ahead of time as to what ex to expect this month. Everything that's going to be happening in this month. That's literally all I want. Just clear, open, transparent communication. What more can I ask for, okay? This is something they've been terrible at for the last few years, and they, they, would, they would slowly, here and there, you know, show signs of improvement, but they won't, like, actually go all the way. This is literally all I've wanted for the longest time. Now that they can give me a roadmap of all the events, of, of all the events that happen in the month two, that would literally be perfect, and I would be happy, okay? Um, so, in case you're confused as to what I'm talking about, let's, let's go through this notice real quick, because it's so satisfying. There's a few other things in this notice as well that's also equally exciting about. Um, will actually have me playing the game more often again like I used to, more seriously again like I used to. Um, but we'll go one step at a time. So, first of all, they actually gave us a roadmap of all of the new medals that they will be releasing this month. Which is, as far as I'm aware, completely unprecedented. They haven't done this before uh, for the game, okay? Or any sort of announcement whatsoever. So... And I'm, I'm willing to bet it's because of the fact that the community already kind of knows what's coming anyways because of JP. We just kind of grab some from JP or, you know, Robloid and Ultimedia. I don't know how they do it, but I guess, I don't know, maybe they data mine the game somehow. I don't know. I, that's, don't quote me on that. I'm just guessing. I'm just, I'm just spitballing here. Okay, they, they somehow dig up this information somehow. Um... But yeah, the community kind of already has an idea of what's coming anyways before it comes to the uh, global version of the game. So it's like, it kind of makes sense for them to just kind of tell us in advance anyways. Just save us the hassle. Just makes it so much easier. It's And the fact that it's better, it's even better that they finally do it through an in-game notice too. Compared to uh, having to rely on third-party sources such as YouTubers like myself. Um, or other third parties like Roboloid and Ultimedia and stuff uh, in order to get this information. So, good step in the right direction. Uh, I would also appreciate it if they also had in-game notices of whenever they do live streams for the game like they do for uh, Dissidia, Final Fantasy, Opera Omnia. I have recently started playing Opera Omnia and I noticed they did that and I got pissed. Actually, I think I have a picture too. But yeah, like, I noticed that, I, got, I was like, why, why don't they do this for Union Cross? It would literally probably get more views if they just did that for Union Cross, okay? <laughs> it's always a wonder why they get so low views for their Twitch streams for Union Cross, and it's always because of two reasons. A, they don't do a very good job of actually advertising the Twitch streams, okay? One of the easiest way to do it is just literally just post a notice in the game itself, letting people know about it in advance. Right? Second, if you're gonna offer rewards, make it something people actually want. Not something that they want you to want. <laughs> Which is what they've done multiple times in the past, and no one would show up. Anyways, okay, so they gave us a list of medals for this month. Two of them we already knew about, or at least the more hardcore community already knew about. Which is, uh, Supernova's, uh, Ultimate Form Sora, and Kingdom Hearts 3 Xemnas. We knew about those. They're basically almost the exact same thing as the Aqua Terra Ventus medals we currently have right now, which, which provide the uh, plus 1500 strength for their own corresponding attribute. The only difference this time is that Ultimate Forest Sora provides the 1500 strength for upright medals 
and Xemnas provides it for reverse mana. Okay, so quite literally, Kyrie and Shion are almost completely worthless. Um, their only value is for their Supernova, which provides the plus 5,000 strength buff, but which only lasts for one turn, in which case it's probably not nearly as good as you would want it to, uh, compared to well, just the other five metals instead. Okay, uh, Aqua Terra, Ventus, Ultima Form Sora, and Universe 2 Zemnis. Alright. You're much better off just copying these, like those five medals, multiple times instead, and overall increasing your entire Keyblade's strength in general for uh, each turn rather than doing one burst in strength for a single turn. It's much better that way. Anyways, um, so we already knew about Ultimate Form Sword and Kinemarch 3 Zemnis, okay? They're literally the exact same thing. Now there's two new medals. It kind of gave a brief, brief description of that we don't know anything about, um, but they gave a brief description about them in the notice, okay? And these are going to be coming in the last half of the month. So the first one being Kingdom Hearts 3 Dark Riku. This is going to be interesting. I don't quite know what this is going to look like. Oh wait, okay, never mind. Strike that. It's probably going to be the the clone dude. We're finally gonna have a speed medal that also ignores defense to kind of complete the trio. So right now we have Zeus and we have Monster Sora. Both of those ignore people's defense and PvP. And we're finally gonna have Dark Riku to uh, add on top of that to complete the, the attribute trio, so fine. Uh, he also has an additional ability as well though, apparently, where he he's gonna be the first medal in the game that decreases the enemy's upright strength in the game. He's gonna be the first medal to do this. Uh, on top of the fact that also decreased target strength in other quests. I'm not quite sure on what they mean by that. I don't know if they're still talking about upright strength or just general strength in general. Guess we'll find out once it comes out. But at the very least, the fact that debuffs upright strength alone is already going to be a somewhat must-have medal for turtling strategies. Um, the second medal though they'll have at the very last week of the month is going to be Kingdom Hearts 3 Dark. Baymax. I'm excited for this one just because of the fact I always liked the idea, the concept of Dark Baymax in general X ever since the initial uh, uh, concept art that they had that they released before Kingdom Hearts 3 came out. I always thought it was, it was pretty cool, pretty dope uh, concept. They say he's going to be a hard-hitting single target metal, so I'm kind of skeptical on how hard-hitting hard are we talking about here? Are we talking about like a uh, like a power reverse version of Pirate Sora? Is that what we're talking about here? Then, yeah, that I, I would agree. That would be a single target hard hitting meta. Um, Dark Maymax will be one of those, uh, will have one of those banners that has both a, uh, a free to play banner and a VIP banner. Just to know it out there. I don't know if it's gonna be Mercy Pull or not. It doesn't say that. Uh, but I'm hoping it does. It only makes sense if it does, if they're, have, if they're gonna have a VIP deal for it. But anyways, continuing on. All right, so they also talk about some of the events that happened this month. Um, well, okay, when I say events, I don't mean like actual events. It's just more like some things that are happening uh, in this month. Okay, so the first thing, uh, in case you haven't been aware of it on social media, I've already seen signs of it on, on Twitter. There's gonna be these new subslot medals introduced into the game that will literally just be subslot fodder. So instead of having to use your own actual medals to fill up subslots, you can use these medals instead. And I'll post a picture up, hopefully, uh, to kind of give you guys an explanation. So it will literally be six different medals, um, a power reverse version of, I mean, a upright reverse version of power, speed, and magic uh, for tier seven through nine. Um, and they will, they're literally just used to fill up your sub slots. That's it, okay? I'm not particularly sure what's the purpose for this. I don't know. Based on what I know so far, I'm not, I don't really see any reason for me to want to go after these compared to just regular metals. If that makes sense to you. Unless they make these metals more accessible compared to regular metals, like if I can get tier 9 of these fodder metals more often, compared to regular tier 9 medals I can use for actual battles and such, then maybe I might chase after these. It'll just depend. I'm not too sure. Uh, but as of right now, I don't really see a 
reason to go chasing somebody. Unless you're like kind of new to the game and you just need better substance. Uh, but yeah, these are going to be introduced to the game. The second thing, and this is the one I'm most looking forward to, because this is probably going to get me back into the game more often. They start taking parts of it more seriously. Finally, it's been forever. Uh, which is the fact that they're going to be improving how raids in the game. Or at least the, uh, the competitive week raids. Okay, so they're going to be revising the rewards for competitive weeks, which only happen one week per, uh, per month. Okay, and normally I, I pretty much kind of quit raiding the last, what, half a year, more or less, maybe longer. Just because of the fact that raiding has literally kind of been pointless for quite the longest time. Because uh, the rewards were literally shit. <laughs> they were literally terrible. There was no there was no incentive to actually raid compa compared to most other quests in the game. The, the rewards were basically the same as just doing a beginner's quest. In which case, I might as well just farm a beginner's quest if I really wanted whatever it was that was in it. In which, in which case, in my position, I don't need anything in a beginner's quest. I need the hardcore stuff, like moon gems, <laughs> to evolve my reverse keyblades and such, uh, or jewels and things, or you know the most recent meta metals, or you know meta skills and such, or trait metals for those metals. And, you know I need top tier stuff, um, not mediocre beginner stuff. So they're finally gonna be revising the rewards for raid events, and I couldn't be happier. My party is finally gonna be revived. Or raiding, we've all, most of us have kind of just been kind of on the down low, just kind of like, eh, just kind of logging in for our dailies and that's it. Um, but now my, we're finally hyped up because they're going to be introducing jewels as part of the rewards for high ranking parties. So, you know, you can bet your ass my party is going to be, oops, camera fogged up. You can bet your ass though that my party is going to be going hardcore again, chasing for that top 10 spot once again in order to get those jewels. How much jewels? I'm not too sure. But if they give us at least like 3k jewels for like, I don't know, top 100 or you know, maybe 5k for top 10 or something, you know, like a really substantial amount. Um, even 2000 would be decent, but it would depend on your ranking. I hope that I hope they do it reasonable. That's the big thing. They need to make the, the amounts reasonable for people to actually want to raid, okay? Um, as long as they don't make, like, the, uh, only the, like, top percent, uh, the top percentage of parties, uh, get the, the best rewards. As long as they don't do that, or, you know, the, the substantial amounts, so, like, for example, if they only offer 1,000 jewels for top, I don't know, for the top, uh, for top 10 that's obviously that's almost like not even worth it <laughs> they need, like 1000 jewels needs to be awarded to like the top 500 parties or something then maybe like two or three thousand for the top 100 and then maybe like five thousand jewels for top 10 for each union okay that that in my opinion will be more along the lines of what i think would be really reasonable really get people back into actually doing rating um so I'm I'm excited for it. I'll actually, it, it's been it's been I've been thinking about it too because I I would still build up my rating setups. Uh, in the meantime, even though I haven't been doing ready, I will still build my raid setups just in case I do want to raid. Uh, seriously, so I'm really excited uh, to get back into raiding. It, it was always fun to actually have uh, do raiding with my party, especially since we're super coordinated and we uh, we've in the past typically have been top ten. Uh, but other than that. That's it for today, guys. I'm super stoked for these updates. I'm so happy that they finally are giving us proper communication. It only took them three, four years, but they finally <laughs> did it. But other than that, I would love to hear what your guys' thoughts and opinions are in the comment section down below. Let me know if you're excited for the future rating. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe, and hit that bell button. It's the best way I know when I upload more videos such as this one. My name is Brian from KX Nation, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace, guys.